Podcast and all pro wrestling, the Tuck Your Chin Podcast. Today we have a huge episode. First, I'm gonna bring in my co host, like usual. First, my co founded member of this lo- lovely podcast, Will's back from his retirement. Yep, from my just like Terry Funk, it's my sixth retirement, but I've come back again because yeah. you know, I love this. And before uh, we start once again, because I heard Mike stutter there, we just want to mention something real quick. What is Mike wearing? Hmm, that's a good question, people. Well, I can officially confirm right now, we have merch. That is right. Mike is wearing the official Tuck Your Chin podcast t-shirt. And as you can see, it's a beautiful color in a beautiful design. Thank you very much to Mike's dad, Paul, for making these because, wow. Well, Will, is, is there information on where I can get one of these t-shirts? Not well, do you ask? Because that will come very, very soon. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me know. You let the people know on Twitter, and I will definitely get one of those shirts. Well, you heard it here, here, folks. If you don't get the shirt, he will come and find you. If you don't get the shirt, then go stub your toe. There we go. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, Will, you can introduce everyone else. You know what? You're back. Do it. Go for it. I feel pleasured, mate. Right. I'll shut up for a while. Here, from, from what I can see in my top left, we have the man. Not only known for his metal band, or whatever it was, it was known as. <laughs> he is also one of my best friends on this, Julian. Oh, I'm a best friend. I'm your best friend now. That that that's absolutely cool. Um, pe- yeah, that. Welcome. To- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Tuck Your Chin podcast. The, like like Mike said, this is the fastest rising podcast in all of pro wrestling, and now we've got the shirts to prove it. We've got the shirts to prove it. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be an awesome episode. We got one of my favorite GTS superstars on. And, uh, and uh, can I actually introduce our next member, Will? Yes, you can. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the one, the only, the, our plug, and the sickest motherfucker I know, <laughs> the one and only Steep Stone. <laughs> Thank you for that, man. And that's right. You heard it here, folks. We have merchandise now. How many podcasts out there have merch? Not taking any shots, but, you know, we have the fastest rising podcast in all professional wrestling. And if you don't know that, you must be hanging out with Jeff Hardy or RVD. Because remember, we are the only podcast that matters on this earth. We, you better listen to us on all major platforms, YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Take it anywhere you go. Take glasses outside your window. Don't care about the complaints, because we are Tuck Your Motherfucking Chin. And you, you know, know what? Steve, just introduce our guest. Do you know what? You yeah, right. job. We have a big special guest tonight. You might have known him from GTS, from Grim Story Show, from the Grim Experience. It's the one and only Mr. Tony Cheney in the building. Give it up. That's me. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey. What's going so, on? Uh, How you doing? Mate, we're chilling. We're chilling. We're having a good time here. We're recording. We have a fantastic guest. We're going to have a fun time. Steve, go, go for the question first. You know, we're going to let Steve get the question first. Let's do it. I'm going to just keep it simple with you. Starting off, how are you doing? How's your Monday? <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm doing the best I can be right now. We're quarantined and uh, live shows are on hold and... That's kind of upsetting, but you know what? Right now, uh, they're slowly starting to make a comeback, and I'm starting to make little bookings for live shows, which is good. So uh, that's always a good thing. But we've been continuing to do GTS through the whole quarantine, and I've been there pretty much through the whole thing. And it's uh, it's good that I have that opportunity because, honestly, a lot of the other wrestlers that I know, not just GTS guys but other guys, uh, they don't have the opportunity to be in the ring right now, and they haven't for a couple months. So I've seen a couple of the guys get in the ring after a little while, and it's like they got a little bit of ring rust. And, it's, and they're still good, you know what I mean? It's just it's, after you're not in there for a little while, it's hard. If 
it's just a harder hit, it's a harder impact, you know? So it, it's good that we're starting to come back, though. Yeah. Yeah. First question, Steve, go for it, man. Rest on the question or anything. Any question. What's it like being a part of GTS? I mean, <laughs> yes, is uh, I mean it's, it's it's one of my favorite experiences. Like as far as wrestling goes, it's it's given me my first opportunity. Like after I started training, and I trained in 2017 at um, the school of 911 ECW original, and uh, after that, like the school kind of closed towards the end of the year because of some financial issues. So I I was kind of off for a little bit, didn't have anything to do, and I wasn't part of any companies or anything like that. And I had the opportunity to go see GTS and. He gave me an opportunity to actually do a match with him, and the rest is history. You know, I mean, it's a great atmosphere. It's uh, he he gives opportunities, and uh, it's good people. You know. Yeah. Julian. All right. So, this is a question that has been plaguing the minds of every single wrestling fan. It is a regular question we have on the Tuck Your Chin podcast, and Mike knows exactly which one I'm talking about. There are a lot of wrestling moves out there, Mr. Cheney. Some good, some bad. But here on the Tucky Chin Podcast, we like to focus on the bad. So, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the wrestling move, The Overdrive? Um, you know, I think it, it's, a, it's a strange finisher. I think it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to be is kind of like a neck breaker variant. Mm. And, like, instead of just grabbing them with your... It's, like, almost like the Ariba Derechi, but with your leg. But, like, it, I don't know. I mean, I feel like with your leg, there's too much cushioning in there. Like, I mean, it's just not a believable finisher. Maybe a believable takedown, but not a believable finisher. Yeah. Will, you always bring that question. Yeah, so following up on sort of the GTS style of wrestling, but for those who may have not seen GTS before or like maybe have just seen it for the first time and feel like, hmm, that's something that potentially I could maybe be a part of, I guess, something like that. How did you get involved with GTS and what made you like stick around? Like, Well, I mean, actually, it's, it's kind of funny because um, I was just kind of doing my own little videos online, like trying to put over the character of the delivery boy. And because it was just something I thought of uh, actually during training. And uh, after the school closed, I figured I had to do something. So I started that character, and my friend started his own character. We were just doing little promos and stuff online. And then Dalton, you know Dalton, he, uh, yep. he actually <laughs> found my YouTube show, and he messaged me asking because I guess he knew that I was local to him. So he was like, hey, I was wondering if you wanted to hang out and whatever. And I asked him if he could uh, bring me to the show sometime. And just so happened he needed a ride. So... I drove him there, and, and then that one day uh, I told him that I had training, and I, I went in the ring and showed him the training that I had, and he gave me a match against him, and then he put me through a table. <laughs> <laughs> Must be one way to have your debut getting put through a table and almost having a broken back. That's uh, the way yeah, we love it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was 300 pounds coming off the top rope. I was terrible. Oh. I mean, really, yeah. like, <laughs> Like, think about it. I had I had just trained in a school. Like, I, I had not trained to go through tables or do any weapons or anything like that. I you trained. were, like, new to the whole taking a bump on a table type thing. Yeah, like, wrestling was, was fine. Like, I knew a little, like, the, the basics of wrestling, but I didn't right. know. I didn't know it. Like, I mean, it's it's not as hard as it sounds, but it's also, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I yeah. Understand that. It, it was tough, but I you live and you learn, and, and you watch my uh, my first match at GTS back, and then you watch like one of my more recent matches, and uh, you could definitely tell the improvement because I, I got to do some training over at Para for a little bit, and I did uh, tra more training with 911 and his son, and so yeah, I, I mean I, I do as much training as I can in seminars and just keep it going, but GTS keeps me going as far as. Like, I'm able to share that knowledge with them, and anything that anybody there learns, they share that knowledge with us. So we all kind of help each other out. Yeah, that's that's really that's really cool. And just a quick follow-up as well. Uh, for those who don't know, who haven't seen me as well, I used to train as well when uh, Knuckle Locks Gym in London was known as the Projo, which was Progress Wrestling's training school. So I used to train with them for a bit. And I know the basics. I know, like, 
I know the international, I know the bumps, I know how to do matches, etc. But I never actually got put for a table. So to be honest, for you to go in the first match and be able to get put for a table, and yeah, you were terrified, but in fact you did it. Fucking respect to you, my man. Respect to you, because that ain't easy. That yeah, is not like, easy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I would not like if you ever do keep pursuing that and like have, actually have a match and, and start wrestling sometime. I don't yeah. suggest going getting put through a table in your first match. Oh no, I wasn't planning to. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, like in my first match in front of a crowd was was totally different, and I got body slammed on the like the solid floor in front of my mom. Yeah. <laughs> so that oh, was uh, those are things I don't suggest doing. Yeah, that reminds me as well. When I when I was training, I got suplexed onto a wooden floor. If it wasn't no, yeah, I got suplexed onto a wooden floor, and I don't think my back has ever clicked back in place since then. Where was that? Where was that training school at? Uh, the one that I trained with Progress Wrestling that was in Brixton in London. Wow, man, they must be rough over there. Just... <laughs> no, they they were fine. I absolutely loved. It, but it was the one before when I was thirteen. When I was 13, I trade for a company for L- called LDN. But to be fair, it was accidental. The guy botched it. I nearly landed on my head. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. But I was like, uh, you know, he didn't mean it, obviously. But we moved on. Right, Mike, let's ask you, shall we? God, so, no. um, how is it being in the uh, the business of uh, delivering pizza? And how can I get into it? <laughs> business of delivering pizza. And how can you do it? Um, the business of delivering pizza is actually pretty easy to get into. You go to your local pizzeria, and if it says help wanted, you ask them, hey, do you need a delivery boy? And they're like, I'll take notes yeah. of this. Can you drive? <laughs> and then, like, and then they're just like, yeah, yeah, okay, then we can hire you. Then do you have a license? I, never mind, we don't need to know that. We're going to hire you. Yes. You pizzas. Yes. And that, so that's pretty how we do it. It's a pretty easy process, but no one will ever be the best there is, the best there was, and the best to ever deliver pizza like I am. Right. Maybe you can teach me your ways, and then we could be like, you know, you could drive, I could run and get the pizza and get the tips, and we could, like, share the $5 bill. <laughs> you just tear it up in half? $2.50 right there. I don't know how that works, though, because I would probably just take the tip. Probably. <sighs> you're driving. I'm just running back and forth. So, yeah. yeah. I'd all. probably... Like lock the door and take it from the window and just drive off. That would be an issue. I'd have to like walk. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's my first question, Steve. <laughs> okay, so since we're on the topic of delivering pizza, what is the weirdest <laughs> pizza topping you've ever seen or had to deliver? What was that? The weirdest pizza topping you've ever heard. Like, uh, someone ever told you they put like fish on pizza or eggs on pizza or something like that? Oh man. <laughs> trying to think i mean people do put um sardines on there sometimes and that's pretty gross but uh are they not i can't i i don't think i'd be able to deal with that i don't know i mean i i mean how do you guys stand on the pineapple on pizza thing because i don't like it i love it let's just say so hang on hang on a minute let's just say i'd rather eat my own shit yeah i put egg yolk on pizza before you put okay. hey, we don't find enough about that, Steve. Like I cracked an egg, then I put the yolk over the pizza. Steve, Wrong. were you spiked or something? <laughs> no, I I just got dared to do it, so I tried it. It wasn't that bad. Oh my god. So I, now we're having okay, so now we're having omelette pizzas. Once again, you learn something new on the top of your gym podcast. Steve likes omelette on his pizza. <laughs> I guess that's my question and that's my answer. Julian, please, please bring us back to wrestling. Uh, God, I don't know where to go from there. My, I had a question, but just got completely erased from this crazy fuck. <laughs> Egg yolk on pizza, Steve? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, 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 the headband, great. Um, yes. I guess, I guess we can really, uh, I guess we could go off with this one. Um. Oh, yeah, I got one. What's it like teaming up with Joey Angelo? That's a great question because it's... I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a crazy, crazy experience. It, I mean, because he... I mean, you obviously can see that he's more of the hardcore guy. And yeah. 
I try to avoid that at most costs. So he is a he's a good asset to have as a team member and not an enemy because he's very durable. He can take and take and take and take and take and just keep kicking out and just keep delivering more. No pun intended. And uh, <laughs> he's he's very good. And honestly, like he's one of those people that like really like took the opportunities that he had and, and just took every single one and just went full force with it. And now he is where he is. And uh, honestly, he's my partner for a reason. Like, you know, I, I, I am the reason he's my partner because I don't want anybody else to be my partner. Him and Fran are the only people I need. Yeah. <clears throat> we need to yeah, so... Them. <laughs> so yeah, moving back slightly to the wrestling standpoint, enough of pizzas and delivering stuff. We're going to talk about about how you mentioned earlier how you were lucky enough to still be in a ring during this quarantine, and you know some of the wrestlers might not be as lucky. What advice and like what tips would you give to those wrestlers who may not be as lucky as you to stay ring fit and most importantly just like stay active? Well, I mean, as as far as uh, I'm concerned, just make sure that you're, you know, just staying in shape at home and not quarantine eating. You know what I mean? Like, like just like sitting there and ordering pizza and Grubhub every 30 seconds. And it's hard not to because it's like when you're sitting there, you just you're like, what do I do? Oh, you know what? I could order this or do that or eat this and not work out or whatever i mean it's, i'm not gonna say that i go and, and hit the weights every 30 seconds but i'm i'm definitely i keep myself in a decent shape and i don't overeat so that's good make sure you keep your cardio up you know what i mean and uh yeah that's the biggest things as far as being like in the ring shape like you don't want to get blown up but and that's going to be easy to do if you haven't been in the ring for a while and you can run a mile yeah. like like yeah. you can run 10 miles every day it's not going to prepare you for being in the ring yeah, and that's one thing as well. Like most people probably won't understand that you can do all the running you like, you can do all the cardio that you like, but until you're actually in the ring, until you actually do like ring cardio, then it's a lot different to what most people think as well. I, again, from personal experience, I used to when I was training, I wasn't as fit as I should have been, but yet at the same time, I was okay when I was in the ring. Now I'm at a stage where when I go back and if I go back. I know now, not only am I fit now, my cardio is good now, but I, once I get back into the ring, you need to be cardio, ring fit. You need to be ring fit. There's a reason why it's called ring rust, not just general rust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's tough to uh, to break sometimes, but you just got to, it's, it's about consistency and just making sure that you keep yourself active. That's really the big thing. Yeah. Did you lose somebody? Yep. It's Mikey turn. Yeah, oh, no, Julian just turned his camera off. He's still here. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, um, so, so, who are your favorite wrestlers growing up? That was my first good question. Growing up, my top three? Of all hey, time. whatever you want. Top 20, top 100, whatever you got. Eddie Guerrero. Cool. The Undertaker. Cool. And Chris Jericho. Oh, okay. for sure, dude. Because, I mean, Eddie Guerrero's, like, in my opinion, I don't know. Anybody, nobody can really, like, argue with me that he's not the best, like, in-ring performer that ever wrestled. And I, I don't know. I mean, that's just a, it's an opinion, but at the same time, in my, in my opinion, it's a fact. Because he just, he had it all. He had the, the, the high-flying, the technical, he had some strength. He could he could be in front of a camera and look good. He could improvise. He could make anybody else look good. Yeah. He was the perfect performer. Him and the Undertaker both have that those same qualities. Yeah, Guerrero's on my top three. I got uh, I got we're a little different. I got Guerrero, I got Benoit, and I got Malenko. <sighs> Very good. What about Perry Saturn? Who? Oh, Perry. I know Perry, Mr. Saturn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They were the radicals, the four of them. Yeah, yeah sure. We'll add them on top number that, four. That feels like what, that feels like he just like read that or somewhere. He's like he's forgotten someone. <gasps> Perry Saturn, that's it. <laughs> it's all right. Everybody forgets about Perry Saturn. Steve. Everyone remembers Perry Saturn. Steve. 
when you first entered GTS to now, how how has your relationship with everyone grown from when you first started to making it this far? Um, I mean, I feel like when I first started, uh, I mean, everybody, you know, obviously people are going to look at you and be like, you know, who's this guy? And that was just how it was at first. And now it's gotten to the point where it's, you know, everybody knows everybody. And, and I, I, I try to make it so I, I want to make sure that nobody's going to look at somebody and just automatically be like, oh, who's this guy? Like, I want everybody to kind of be open hands and want to help out, and, you know, so. And that, and I'm not saying that it was never like that, but it's just that you, you always have that that thing in your mind, like you don't want somebody to take like your spot, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Julian. Oh hey. Uh, oh hello. You were playing with your. By the way, by the way, before, 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 you, Julian, before you get on to your question, right? before you move on to your question, why do you have a Walter doll with you? <laughs> oh, this little thing. I don't yeah. Know. What are you, a ventriloquist? He's from uh, NXT, right, Walter? Yeah, he does the chops. <laughs> Walter. You know? <laughs> right, that's going to be in my nightmares now. Brilliant. <laughs> Walter. Thank you. Okay. Hey, go for your question. Yeah, throw, throw, throw Walter around there like he's not a good wrestler. Go for it. Oh. Yeah. Fuck you. Um. So. Yeah, that was. I was trying to do the Elias thing. Yeah. Um. I guess to really. Shut up. Um. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. You're good. Oh yeah. This actually goes along with the action figures and stuff like that. How much? What's the most you spent on an action figure? Oh, this is gonna be good. Uh... Let me look around. I, oof, I don't know, man. I mean, I try not to spend too much. Like, I try to find weird things that are not too costly, but I'd say... Looking around... Let's do a 360. I'm going to have to say, like, eight bucks. I really haven't spent a lot. I, I've found some really good deals. Like, if you look around, like, if, all right, if you basically, if you look in, like, those, like, collectors' websites and all that kind of stuff, you're, you're going to get, like, a big price, usually. But yeah. if you, like, look around at, like, flea markets and, like, little shops and stuff like that, then you'll find something that's, like, rare, a lot of money, and they'll sell it for cheap. Like, I'll show you guys one right now. Hold on. Oh, this yeah. is a uh, lesson learned with Tony Cheney. That's right. So... Right up here. Oh, oh wow. wow. Road Warriors. Oh my god. I found that's, that uh, boy right there right from my house. Like, like, just found it. Just right down the street from my house at a store. And they were selling it for like dirt cheap because they didn't know how much it was. It was like, like 60 bucks. 60? Yeah. Oh my god. American dollars, not not UK. Yes, I know, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. our, our, the way we are is a little different from our, our fellow European friends. But, uh, yeah, honestly, like these. Oh, oh that's a bot. Someone. So... <laughs> Coming soon. Continue. I'll continue, but yeah, I like to collect these Funko Pop figures and the most i've spent was on this freddie mercury <laughs> it was like 35 dollars that's not bad, that's yeah, not bad. Oh, i have i have a few funko pops because i have oh here i'll show you some more here look at this so i got it oh my god that's actually amazing and i got these guys here oh andre hogan angle Borkley. Oh, that, was Brock Lesnar, man. that is awesome. Yeah, and then also I have over here Hollywood. Yes. So cool. Right on. That dude, that's amazing. Will. Yes. And before Hello. we continue, 
Julian. Julian, this is how you do Eliza's G chord. That's how you do it. Playing the guitar. My, my, my guitar is out of tune, I think. I could tell. Uh, but moving on. <clears throat> moving on. So, slightly, slightly off topic question, but it's fine, whatever. So, you mentioned again how much you actually spent on, you know, an action figure. What was it $8 as long as the most, you said? Yeah, just about $80, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Something like that. Other than your action figures and other than obviously delivering pizza, was there any other like. Was there any other like hobbies that interested you other than wrestling and like action figures and all that? Well, the video games too, the wrestling video games. It's really like a lot of my interests are pretty much like the wrestling is the root of all the interest because I like wrestling, wrestling action figures, wrestling video games, wrestling everything. You know what I mean? I, I'm yeah. very, but I also do I, I do enjoy music. Um, I was, when I was in middle school and high school, I was in a band. I was not, I didn't play in, um, in like the school band, but I just, me and my friends had a band and I was the singer, but I also played a little bit of uh, bass and did a little bit of the drum. I wasn't very good on the guitar, but that was my thing. I was in a, I was in a band called Jet Black and then, oh. and then I moved and then I was in a band called Every Second Counts. Well, what, what genre? Yeah. Uh, we, did, we, did like, we did, like, covers. Like, in Jet Black, we did um, we did The Who, we did The Kinks, we did um, Led Zeppelin, and uh, we did, like, that kind of stuff. And then in my other band, we did, like, Three Days Grace and Pantone. Could you sing a Three Days Grace song right now on this podcast? I have uh, their deep right here. I can't be doing that. All right, all right, all right. How about this? How about this? As a, as a quick... As a quick uh, side note from that, if you can guess the song I'm playing, then I'll be really impressed because I'll, it was by one of those names. It's by one of those bands that you just said. Isn't that the Kings? Yes! Yeah. Okay. Jeannie, you're good. You're fine. We're good with music. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have those, man. Of course, SmackDown Here Comes the Pain, let me tell you, was actually my first wrestling game that I ever had. And I played it for hours upon hours. I still play it for hours upon hours. SmackDown Shut Your Mouth is a really good game, too, though. That was, yeah, that was a really fun. I, you know what? I really enjoyed like you, My first personal wrestling game was actually SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. And that was the first time I saw Randy Orton. And that was the first time I saw Brock Lesnar, The Rock, etc. All those names on there, I was like, oh my god, I can control these people and I can use my fist to punch them. It's like, yeah. Yeah. open your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael, what was your first wrestling game? Uh, WWE 2K12. 2K12? So it wasn't even made by 2K. Oh, it wasn't? I think 13 no. was the first 2K. Oh, no. WWE 12. 13. Yeah, that one. Oh, my turn, yes. Are you, is this the one you're talking about, Mike? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know saw... if you guys remember this one. My first game was WWE Crush Hour, like with them in the cars. I loved that game. It was like the Twisted Metal version. There you go. Oh, there you go. A... I'm so jealous. That was such a good game. It's like I was 11 years old when that came out. Jesus Christ. Okay, my question. So, um, what? How did you come up with the name Tony Cheney? Um. So, my dad is also Tony Cheney. Oh. And, uh, so I'm basically Tony Cheney Jr. But my dad didn't wrestle, so it was it was it was still his like it was still his let's just say gimmick name, but he didn't wrestle. Mm. Okay. Uh, you talked about earlier on um, like in pro wrestling everything. Have you ever watched any movies based off of professional wrestling? If you have, what was your favorite one? Oh, oh that's well, a good. 
I gotta say I'm ready to rumble because that's how you're yes! yes I yes! last night. That movie's great. But I mean of course, you know, you got like all the Hulk Hogan movies and I haven't really watched all of them honestly, but like I've seen like a little bit of Suburban Commando and uh, all those random ones with Hulk Hogan. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I've seen with wrestlers in it. I, well, I mean, have you guys ever seen The Wrestler with Ricky Morton? Yeah, Ricky yeah. Morton and Ever Rachel. That movie is amazing, dude. I love that movie. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> what's What's that movie with with uh, he? It's like Kurt Angle and like he, I don't think he's actually like in the movie for long, but like he like cage fights this guy. Oh, oh shit! I watched that one. Um. Fuck. I watched that What's last up? year in, in, in school. I've never seen it. I want to see it. I just want to see Kurt Angle cage fight the guy. <laughs> if you no, give me one see... second, Julian, ask the question. I'll be right back, and I'll and I'll get it up for you right after you ask the question. Yeah, I mean, there's. I remember the first ever Hulk Hogan movie I watched. It was uh, Mr. Nanny. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I. One, actually. Yeah. Uh. And then I saw No Holds Barred. God help me. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one? Is that the one uh, where where he like grabs the guy and he's like, "What's that smell?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, ah, get out of me. "Oh, I got I got the movie." <laughs> uh, Warrior. Okay. Oh, Warrior. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah. That was the movie. Yeah. I remember Kurt Angle being in a movie called Pro Wrestlers vs Zombies, and like, oh my god, bro, that. Shit. Yeah, like right when you said Kurt Angle movie. Oh, that that where they wrestled in a prison, and then they it was infested by zombies. Yeah, he did the ankle lock kind of zombieing, like broke his leg. And yeah, tore tore his foot off, and then Hacksaw Jim Duggan was in it. Matt Hardy was in it. Shane <laughs> the Frank Douglas, like it was a terrible movie. That sounds like quite the cast. I'm yeah. Gonna watch it. Yeah, Kurt the only the only real like, actor. It was Roddy Piper. <laughs> that was the only real actor in that movie. Yeah. yeah, Roddy Piper. My favorite wrestler of all time, Roddy Piper, in a shitty zombie film where he ends up necking on with some mid 30s woman, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, go for it, man. Oh, yes. So, uh. Deep, you go. Oh, sure. What? I, you go. I got nothing now. I need to think of something more. What was your favorite tag team growing up as a kid? Ah, let's see. Growing up as a kid, I really liked um, Paul London and Brian Kendrick. That's a good one. Yeah, they That's were really one. cool. And like, I got to meet uh, both of them one time at WrestleCon, and that was just—they were just honestly the nicest people. And like, it was before I started wrestling or anything like that. But they, like, I just talked to Paul London for like. I think, like, two hours. He was just really cool. Just, like, nice guy. And He didn't have to talk to me. I didn't, you know what I mean? I was just standing there at the convention. But it was it, it was just a cool experience to see how down to earth he was, like, after watching him on TV. And, like, that actually left an impression on me, like, later on. Because I, I kind of think of myself, I want to be that same person. Like, you know what I mean? I want somebody to watch me. And I don't want somebody to think, like, oh, this guy is some you know, some asshole that in real life and then he just goofs around on the camera, you know what I mean? Like, I want it to be like, this guy's a good guy, you know? Yeah. Paul London kind of instilled that in me. Oh, yeah. I got my question now. Yes. Out of all, out of, shut up, Mike. Out of all the matches you've had in GTS Wrestling, what was the worst bump you've ever taken? That's a good question. And I already know what it is. It's when... I was in the TLC match, and he oh. gave the pile driver on top of the ladder. You broke your ankle. And yeah, and I sprained my ankle. That was horrible. Oh. As someone, as someone who's torn I, ligaments in his ankles, I know how bad that hurts. A couple weeks later, I drove all the way to Maryland and wrestled two matches in a tournament with my sprained ankle in front of seven people. Oh my god! Wow! Wow! Yep. Will? Crazy. I wrestled yeah. the best guy in the world for Yeah. 
yeah, again, respect for doing that because, again, I've torn both ligaments in both my ankles three times, so I know how bad like the ankle injuries get. Like, I'm surprised I'm walking right now. That's how it is. But yeah. moving on, I scissor kicked, uh, I scissor kicked Kurt Bale, and I, I was just like, that was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like depression but yeah so we've all obviously obviously we're all in wrestling because we love it and we are all in it because we kind of want to do it as well at one point we would love to try it anyways but also whilst we're a fan we're always going to have this question and i'm going to say it to you as well is there any dream matches that you will be looking forward to in the future if you could have them yeah i mean i'd like to have a question a whole bunch of them, but uh uh, one of the people that I'd really like to wrestle is um, Zach Gowan. He's Zach Gowan? Yeah. He had one leg. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, because um, he, he's a bit, he was actually a really big inspiration uh, also to me because my sister is actually in a wheelchair. Uh, she has a spinal cord injury. And oh. uh, she just doesn't, she doesn't let that stop her. Like, she, she's out, she lives in California. She actually, like, she's an actress. She's been in a few movies. She she she's been on Netflix on a few TV shows and stuff, and like she's a big inspiration on me. So seeing Zach Gowan, that's kind of like the wrestling version of my sister, and uh, I've I've always just wanted to face him just for that, you know. Go up and, first thing, your sister. She sounds like an incredible person. What? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what that was. So God bless your sister. She sounds like an amazing and inspirational person. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, if if you want to look her up, her name is Santina Muha. She, she look her we'll up. Put that this. Put that this group. Santina, you you gotta have to send that over this phone. I, I will. It. I will. Uh, will yes. W- was that your question or you? Yeah. What, 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 what are you doing? Was, for some reason, I don't know why. Julian's now putting Jeff Dunham characters on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, this was the 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 most unique podcast you've been on so far, Mr. Cheese. Uh, yeah, no, I did. A, I'm I'm gonna say that I did a podcast earlier today, and they didn't ask any GTS questions, and they didn't have any Jeff Dunham Dun- 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 characters. So <laughs> this is uh, this is definitely a very different experience. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. that's that's what the Tuck Your Chin podcast is all about. <laughs> it's raining, man. I gotta stay protected inside. It's usually uh, Will with all. Uh, the- no, as you can yeah. see, for some reason, he has an umbrella indoors. I don't know why he's doing that. I also got Roddy Piper soda. Are you yep. trying to make me jealous? Get that. I got this at a place called Rocket Fit. Like it's where there's a place in Delmar, and uh, they have this place called Rocket Fit. They have a bunch of different unique candies and soda and. I just found this and I was like, oh my gosh, like I lo- love this movie. So, yeah, Hold I'm up. all. Um, what, what is this place that they sell it at? Rocket Fizz. Rocket Can I get a sip? Fizz? Yeah, pour, pour it under your phone. Maybe, maybe you can like get it. Yeah, let me get a sip. Oh my god, yo, I gotta, I gotta get my hands on that for the collection. Like, yeah, not being funny. They don't sell it in the UK. They don't sell it in the UK. So I am gutted. That's dope. I have one. Of, I have these actually. These are cool. Hey, we're just you these, know, are, these we're... are old. I, I can't open and drink these because they're so old. But oh my I'll god! I'll drink it for you. <laughs> That's Steve old would drink wrestling. It. Steve will drink it for you. If you if you need a gone, <laughs> Steve will drink it. I'll drink it for you if you want me to. This is actually like this is actually from PWS Wrestling, and um, star characters. And uh, one of the people, like, you know, it was a masked character, so a bunch of different people would wear the mask sometimes. And one yeah. of the people who wore the mask at, at some point was Joey Janela, so he actually signed this. Oh, wow. Oh, Mr. my God. Mr. Janela, I know Mr. Janela. Everyone loves him. Bad boy. Yes, more bad than you, Mr. Steep. More bad than you. Ain't no bigger creep than Steep. I'll take him down. <laughs> That's right, Joey Janela, I'm calling you out. And then you'll find out next week why Steve has a black eye. Or <laughs> possibly <laughs> in the grave, but who knows? Anyways, moving on, Mike. Oh, my turn. Yes. Um. So, like, how 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 is it just that like 
GTS, like behind the scenes, like what do we not see? Because I know for a little bit you did that like behind the scenes stuff for GTS was, but was there more behind the scenes on behind the scenes? I mean, it's just it, we just do our thing, you know. We 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 hang out. It's, it's like I said before, it's a good environment. We take care of each other, and uh, I mean, you enjoy the show, right? So we make each other look good, and yeah, that's, that's yeah. what we do. You know? That's uh, we we are always thinking and training, and like I and and making sure that we're safe and look good. You know what I mean? Yeah, steep. Um, shit. <laughs> when I got this. Whatever you got, Steve. Uh, when you were having your your first ever wrestling match, what what were the nerves like? How were you feeling going into it? Oh, man, it was like none other, man. I mean, like, like I said, it was very unexpected, and I didn't even know I was gonna wrestle. I thought I was just going to watch. And then maybe I'd like talk to them a little bit and like convince them to let me come back. But I didn't expect to just be like, okay, you're in a match against Grimm for the Intercontinental Championship. <laughs> and like, it was just like, it was very nerve wracking. But at the same time, he wasn't like, he, like, I remember I told you I went through a table. Like, he yeah. didn't tell me, like, you have to go through this table. Like, it wasn't like that. Like, he, like, we were joking about it because he knew it was my first match. So he was like, oh, yeah, we'll put you through a table. And they were, like, laughing. Like, not laughing at me, just joking around. And I was yeah. like, well, I'll actually, I was like, I'll actually go through a table. And they were like, really? And I was like, yeah, I'll try it. And, like, he, he kind of told me later that, like, like, the fact that, like, he knew that I was nervous. But the fact that I still was able to say, like, you know what, I'm going to try this. That's why he was like, I want to have this guy back. It's that willingness, isn't it? It's the willingness and like, the, the, like that proven, that proven, like that proven about you that you were willing to do something that even though you had no idea how to. Yeah, it was just like it was. Well, I mean, like you know, obviously we talked about it and like uh, they kind of like, what's it called? Basically, like they 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 showed me the ropes on how to do it, but you can't train somebody to get. Yeah. Ready. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it, you uh-huh. can't do that but they told me how to they told me how to protect myself and uh they you know they made sure that i really wanted to do it before we went through with it but it was just nervous it was nerve-wracking because it was like you know like at some point he like he super kicked me and like it was just the first time that like so much connection was made onto my face from the (laughs) foot and i was like oh my god like it was like it was like i mean it didn't hurt like as much as you would think but at the same time it was shocking it's it's a huge shock when like because you're not it's, your body's not naturally trained to be kicked in the face, is it? Absolutely not. Nothing. I mean, nothing Steve, on your body's trained to get hit and, and smashed. That you have to do that. And like when I so when I trained at um at Shikara, when I you, do you guys know Shikara wrestling? Oh yeah, I know Shikara. Yeah. So Mom. when I there, uh, Mike Quackenbush, one of the things he said because a couple of the people that I was training with, it was like their first time ever being in a ring and training. So he has to yeah. kind of go over the basics with everybody. And one of the things that he even said was, like, it's not uncommon for people to take their first bumps and then bleed blood. Like, like piss blood, you know what I mean? I've heard that one before, yeah. And it's like, and I, I fortunately did not do that. Like, and I, and I, meant, I said ble- bleed blood, but I meant piss blood. But you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Wait, 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 hold up, what? Yeah, like if if you all right. So basically, what I was saying is that when you first start wrestling training, it's not uncommon for you to pee blood your first couple times doing bumps. Yeah, that's true. Oh my lordy lord! And it doesn't happen to everybody. It didn't happen to me. But, yeah, it didn't happen to me luckily. And it's just, but it does. It's it's one of those things that that you have to realize in your mind that like you watch people doing that, and, but like. They're repetitively, like, teaching them, training their bodies. Re- like, you literally have to retrain your body how to move and how to and how to function. It's it's very it's it's very intense. Yeah. yeah. Julian. Uh yeah. Great. I I hate when you guys come back to me. <laughs> I'm prepared for this. Sorry. Hey, um, Tony fucking Cheney. Of course you're gonna be unprepared. 
That's weird. Um, <laughs> and, oh yeah, I got I got a good one. Um, favorite per, favorite match you wrestled with GTS? Um, that's tough because I have a lot of favorites, but I mean, like one of my favorites was when I did the um, the Falls Count Anywhere with uh, Joey Angelo. I remember that one. I remember that one. When I did, when I gave him the pile driver. Um, on the neighbor's yard, Grim, Grim was like legitimately pissed off. He didn't know. He had no idea. That was one of those things that like we didn't tell him, and like he had no idea what we were gonna do. And you could even tell him, like you could even like hear him. He's like, I'm actually pretty pissed off right now. Like he was being real, like because we were just fighting everywhere. We wanted to make it look like it was the biggest fight, like the, the like outside. We we were going everywhere we can fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we wanted to make sure it was a big fight feel, and we wanted to give the fans everything that they wanted and more, so we we just went full out. And uh, those those couple of matches that I had with him before we started teaming up um, are probably my favorites because he could really bring it in the ring, so and we have good chemistry. I also really like wrestling um, Kurt Bale, though, and Onslaught. I feel like we, we have good chemistry. And and Jake Cage, I have really good matches with Jake Cage that I've had. I know Mr. Cage. Yeah, Th- those guys are awesome. I mean, like, I'm just curious. Like, did you have any idea what GTS wrestling was before you started wrestling with them? Yeah, um, actually, you can go back to an episode where Grim uh, managed Kurt Hawkins at a live show, and um, he actually gets like kick- kicked out of ringside. And then he's trying to sneak back to ringside, and he comes over to me, and I'm in the crowd. I'm not on GTS yet at this point. I'm not even trained to be a wrestler or anything. Like, he just comes over to me, and he's like, hey, don't tell everybody I'm over here. I'm hiding. And I was just like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a big fan. You know what I mean? It's just, that's all. Yeah. I started actually training, and then my way to a show. Wasn't that against Tommy Dreamer? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I remember. It's been a while. It's been a little while since I've, uh, I've, I've, I've it's been a while since I've watched uh, GTS. I, if I'm being perfectly honest, and I'm not trying to be like that as like an insult. <laughs> yes, it's just like it's. I've been really busy with like my own stuff with like work and you know doing stuff for my Instagram TV, which is coming soon. Shameless plug. But, plug but um, but yeah, it's just yeah. From like what I've been seeing recently, I just recently started watching. Like, it's been, like, half a year since I've watched GTS, and I've been really catching up. And uh, I love, I've been liking what I've been seeing so far. I really have. Um, I, like, one of the things that I've, I really wanted to um, talk about on pretty much any podcast that I went on, because I, I accepted a few podcasts because I want as many people to hear this message as, as possible. And the message is, is that uh, going forward, uh, you're going to be seeing a different in-ring Tony Chini. Uh, it's it's going to be it's 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 going to be very map-based and technical. And I'm um, I'm going to start instead of I do a lot of I do a lot of character work and I do a lot of joking around. But I'm going to show everybody, including everybody in GTS, that I could wrestle and that I could take you to the mat and I could hit you with the biggest clothesline you've ever seen. That one. This is uh holy shit. So yeah, if for every GTS wrestling fan out there, you heard it here first. You're seeing a different Tony Cheney. You're not gonna see the Pizza Man. You're gonna well, you might still see the Pizza Man, but you're gonna see a very aggressive Tony Cheney, a more whatever you want to call it, Tony. Heel. Heel. Yeah. Cal- I'll, I'll call it calculated. That's a better word. Yeah, sure. Same thing. Uh, Will. Well, I, well, yes. Will. Will. Will you. <clears throat> it's me. So, Tony Genie, so we, you just spoke about how you're going to have a different style of in ring style. You're going to be more map based. You're going to be more technical based. You're going to hit people with the biggest clothesline that you've ever seen. That being said, you haven't mentioned this yet, the future of Tony Genie. Is there anything 
coming up in the future that you have your eyes on or is there anything that you want to pursue um i mean obviously i want any gold i can get but the one gold that i haven't gotten yet the one piece of gold the one title that i haven't gotten yet in gts is the youtube championship and i don't yep. care as it whether it's Rhett titus whether whether tito the clown gets it back whether it whether Ooh. it's anybody whether it's grim himself I'm willing to take it and do whatever I need to to take it. And that's exactly why I have this attitude change. And you know what? I, I and you know what? Fans probably will probably have a little bit of a culture shock when they probably see this new Tony Cheney because they're used to the pizza delivery guy. They're used to your other style of wrestling. But this new style of wrestling could elevate you to a whole new level. Well, that's what I'm hoping it does. And um, I'm hoping that uh, Julian over here starts watching. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna keep tabs on you, brother. Because you gotta see you're gonna see the biggest clothesline you've ever seen. I'm telling you. I mean, can I'm we just head off. Can we just can we just quote this by the way? You are promising us the biggest clothesline we've ever seen. On June 8th, 2020, at 6:51, you are the promising next, the biggest clothesline ever. The next singles match that I have on GTS, I promise you, I will hit that person with a giant clothesline. And I don't care if it's out of nowhere. It will happen. Hey, you know what you could say? You could say, tuck your chin, and then boom. <laughs> if they tuck their chin during the clothesline, then they're going to be in a lot of pain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, honestly, hopefully when, when you get the GTS, not GTS, tuck your chin t-shirt, maybe you can wear it on one of the GTS episodes. Shameless plug. Well, I might just have to. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link, Mr. Cheney, when when it's yeah. up. And maybe and maybe maybe if like Graham has like the camera towards you, tell him look check, check, look at the shirt, look at the shirt, the best podcast in the world. Tuck your chin. <laughs> I'm gonna tell everybody this. That's gonna be my reminder to everybody. I'm gonna say, listen, if you guys forget, tuck your chin. The first, the the, the top part. You know, we'll we'll talk about the okay. second part Most later. Important rule. What's the most important rule in wrestling? Tuck your Tuck. chin. Yeah. That's it. My turn. So this is going to be good. So do you prefer being a heel or a baby face? This is a good question always. What's that? A heel or a baby face. Do you have a preference? Um, I, don't, I don't think I have a preference really because um, I think, I mean, honestly, I don't like to think of myself as sticking to either one. I, th I think that uh, I put I put forth the right momentum in anything I'm doing. And if I feel like I have to be a nicer person to get what I want, then I'm going to do that. But if I feel like I have to do dastardly things and I have to get what I want by, you know, cheating a little bit or doing whatever I have to do, then that's just it. Cheating. Yeah. <laughs> There is no shame in Eddie Guerrero did it all the time, right? It ain't right. cheating if you're not getting cool, and it ain't cheating if you're not trying. Yep. That's it. Cheers. Steve. Um, if you were to have a, a unscripted promo with The Rock, what would your mindset be? I'd be probably, I'd probably pee my pants. <laughs> uh, um, I'd probably, I'd, my legs might give out. I might just fall. I think I might just fall on the ground, honestly. But, I mean, I would try my best. I would give him my all, but he'd probably still crush me. <laughs> At least you tried. <laughs> That's what matters, right? Steve, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Julie, your turn. Um... Hey, you can go with the last one. I got one more, and then uh, Stephen Will could take it away. Okay, yeah, because we still have to get to the second part of the Tucker Chain where we talk about music tastes and all that stuff, but we pretty much already did. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do the turnover. Oh, the turnover. All right. Yeah. So, Mr. Cheney, um, I guess we can take a, take a break from talking about wrestling because I really, I'm a huge music freak. I'm, uh, they don't call, I'm called the heavy metal joker so you kind of already know what kind of music i'm into but uh, uh classic like rock. what classical rock 
Fuck you. R&B. <laughs> um, I swear to God, if one of you says UK grind, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but uh, UK hip hop. UK hip hop. Oh God. Oh, I guess sir. <laughs> Nothing against UK hip hop. I, I like. You lost Will. Will's alive. Don't worry, he'll come back. I'm so here. I'm just charging my phone. <laughs> You're charging your phone. Okay. Yeah, because uh, it's a lot of percent. Yeah, you have fun yet, Genie? I'm just curious. Are we boring you? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm bad at this. I get nervous. But anyway, concerning music tastes, like, what do you think is the your favorite genre of music and your least favorite genre of music? I like to listen to, like, everything, really. I mean, like, I like to just, I, I like to be open to music and, like, uh, you know, like, the, I think that every genre has a couple good songs. Like, I'll even, like, a couple weeks ago, I was jamming out to yodeling music, just randomly, just, just yodeling music. And it was really good. I mean, like, if you really look into, like, like the, the, the work that they put into the music and, and everything, it's, it's, it's really, really good. But as far like when I was in middle school and high school, like I was all about like Nirvana and um, like you know just grunge, like '90s grunge, and like you know even like like Breaking Benjamin, like that type of stuff. Uh, I am, those, those were the things, man. That is my favorite band. Praise you, sir. Praise you. Yes. You, 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 you had a stroke there, Mike. What the fuck? <laughs> I did that? have a stroke. I heard breaking Benjamin and I was I, I woke up. <laughs> okay. God, that I'm was what the fuck was that, Mike? Uh, <laughs> anyway, Mike, you have to have a question now. Yes, I do have a question. So, like, what's your thoughts? Could you do your best Fred Durst impression? Fred Durst. Just my last question. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. Now I know y'all be loving this. Get shit right here. <laughs> Larry Bird's get it. Yeah. It's 19.99. Uh, that's that's my last question. I just need to know if you can do a Fred Durst impression. Durst <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> the Durst cast being uploaded on the Moshcast YouTube channel. Coming soon. Yeah. Oh my god. You gotta come on for that episode, Will. Yeah. You're gonna love Will's your ass about this. We're also having the staff cast. With... <laughs> Oh, then we're going to have the pizza cast with Steve making an omelette pizza. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm cheating right. off of that episode. Right. This is going to be my question and then potentially the final question as well, unless anyone else wants one. Steve, do you have any stupid ones? Wait, anyone I can ask? Oh, just do it after Will. Will, you can say something <laughs> smart and then we'll go to Steve. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. All right, that's going to be my final question. It's going to be my final question. So, again, it's less wrestling, but it still kind of relates. So, when you're making your entrance, obviously it's very important to have the right music, but some people, I've, like, literally, I've, I've never understood this. Some people have said that entrance music is not important to the character. What a load of shit. Now, for you, personally... Do you think your entrance music matters? And if it does, which I think it does, how should it represent your character? So I think that um, a, like a certain person like doesn't have to have entrance music, and I think that that might get their character over, especially to be a heel. Mm. Uh, like like if a heel just comes out and doesn't have any music and just looks at the crowd all angry, that could really like, set off some emotion in people, like, oh, screw this guy. You know? And, um, but with me, with my entrance music, as far as, like, the delivery boy goes, um, at a live show, I like to use, um, uh, what's it called? Um, That's Amore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, like, um... and it fits, like, it really, like, I, I could do that same, like, song as a, as a baby face or as a heel, and I can just, just depending on how I come out of the curtain, that will just depend, that will totally just change the crowd's mood. Like, it, I'll either come out and it's like, hey, and everybody's excited, 
or I come out and I look at everybody and I don't say hey and I just look and give them like a nasty look and they're like oh who's this guy you know and like it's it, it's it's not like I mean yeah it's about the music but it's also about how you like how you like really act and, and vibe to the music. Yeah, I, I get that. It's like, again, a follow, quick follow up as well. Like when you said that some heels could have no music and it suit their character, that's exactly what Tommaso Ciampa did in NXT for a bit. Yeah. And I thought that worked brilliantly. I thought yeah. it worked absolutely brilliantly. He looked at the crowd looked like he wanted to murder every single man, woman, and child in the bloody thing in the area. And it worked. It worked. We all hated him. Steep. No, I'm not going to do anything. Oh. Nope. Ask like two questions. Don't don't make them that stupid. But make, make them stupid. No, no, no. For real, it's a real question. Tony, if you were to make a song, what three rappers or singers would you have featured on it? That's actually like, pretty good. All right, so I would definitely have Ric Flair on there. Yep. Woo. He raps. Because he's the best rapper in the world. Sure. Uh, can they be? Can they be dead or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah they can be. Time. From past, present, future. All right, then I'll definitely have Macho Man Randy Savage on there because he could throw in some bars. <laughs> and then I'd probably have Hulk Hogan on the bass. <laughs> Hulk Hogan on the bass? Yeah. Damn. See, I'd probably do uh, Chad Kroger, um, Tony Chini, and uh, Benjamin Burnley from Breaking Ben. That is... Uh, that's a, quite the, the middle school band for me. Yeah, you could be co-vocals. Chad Kroger and... Oh, man. Yeah, now that would actually be really funny. Hey, let's <laughs> make it happen. Uh, what you about, know what? I would about... have Billy Joel... Yeah, I'd, I'd have Billy Joel Armstrong from Green Day up front, then I'd Paul McCartney on bass, and then on drums... And then on drums, I'd have Keith Moon. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Steve, what about you? I have all of you guys. Oh, Steve! Wait, hang on, hang on a minute. I can play. Hang on a minute, Steve. I can play guitar, bass, drums, and piano. So you're gonna be. Yeah. Both your arms, and then your feet can be doing the rest. <laughs> oh, Mike, so Julia could be like <laughs> the, the singer. Mike, he could be doing whatever he wants. He's over and over again. Yeah. I'm ready to bury all of my bones. Okay. This is why we don't hear him sing. <laughs> okay, oh, touch your turn over time. I, I haven't said mine yet. Oh, okay. sorry. I'm sorry, Julie. Oh, What's yeah. wrong with you, Mike? Yeah, Mike, what are you doing, Mike? Pointing at you. Oh, yeah, to me, it looks like you're pointing at Will. But I will. anyway, I guess for me... <laughs> to me, uh, for vo- Steve. Okay. Uh, for vocals, I would have. Ooh, vocals, I would have Corey Taylor from Slipknot. On, oh. yeah, for guitar, good. for guitar, I would have Slash from Guns N' Roses. For ba- yep. for bass, I would ha- for bass, I would have Getty Lee from Rush. <laughs> And for drums, I would have Travis Barker from Blink-182. Not bad lineup. Not Love bad Travis lineup. And if Getty, and if, but since Getty Lee doesn't play play anymore, I would have to say, if I have to go with like a metal sound, I would have to have Rex Brown from Pantera. You okay. like, you pretty much like sound like me in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay, tuck your chin turnover time. Tell them what it is, uh, Julian. Right. I will tell you what. The tuck your chin turnover is a little segment where our guests turn over to us and ask us questions. Okay. Okay. So it's the Chini cast with special guests Julian, Steep, Mike, and Will. It's okay. Chini. So what? No, so no, this, this is interesting. I like this. So I do have some questions. Now... When watching GTS, one of the things that we notice is that, like, uh, the the watch time, we can we can see and monitor the watch time and see like 
like when people like how people are skipping and like what parts they're watching and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And we yeah. notice yeah. that a lot of the time the matches themselves are the least watched part of the, the whole videos. And mm-hmm. like to us, that that really sucks to us because we obviously, we you know, we put our bodies on the line and, and do these crazy things and, and kill ourselves and then we realized well that's the least part of the video and the most watched part was the part where we were all you know joking around or doing something and whatever and my theory is that obviously you guys are interested you know because you want to have me on the podcast for instance you're interested in seeing how we work as regular people so you're right so you want to see us joking around and doing all that stuff but what is like what's the thing that we can do in the match to get you guys as fans to want to watch more without us saying like i guess we don't need to have a match you know like i, I want to still be able to wrestle but still interest you guys so what's what's to you like something that we can, that we need more of or less of as far as the wrestling goes will or- we'll start with uh we'll start with julie oh oh he's taking it away yeah julie yeah, it- I don't know, dude. He gets to pick. But, um, but yeah, that is a really good question, Tony. Um, like, again, for me, like, it's been a long time. It's been a little while. You know, and, again, I've just recently gotten, like, fully back into it. Like, like coming back to see, like, what's been going on, like, recent rivalries and recent pay-per-views and stuff like that. Like, I, um, like, I just got to uh, Grimma Mania from this year. But, uh... Yeah, I still I still got a long way to go, but uh, I guess for me, like, cause I started watching GTS wrestling way before it was GTS wrestling. I remember like the action figures and stuff like that. Yeah. But like for me, like when Grim Toy Show was started just on Fridays, like, cause I remember Grim would have like a schedule. It'd be like Monday would be like a toy review, then it would have like a store hunt on a Wednesday, then Thursday something happens, and then Friday would be his GTS wrestling show. And I remember, like, all his rivalries with, like, Grime and Travone and, uh, you know, Hawkins, of course. And Travone. So, yeah, for me, like, the funniest parts about that were, like, you know, like, of course, like, he had his rivalry with the Ninja Twins and a- Alex. I think that's his name. Yeah, Alex. Alex Toy Show. It's just, like, the very funny jokes. Because I remember, Grim said this in, like, videos before, like, when he would make videos, he was just trying to make his friends laugh. Mm-hmm. And then it would be like, because like, oh, maybe we could get a camera out. Maybe this can make other people laugh. And like, that's how GTS got like super popular. And Grim would, next, you know, Grim is wrestling a John Cena 12 foot re- figure on top of his trampoline. And next thing you know, um, freaking Jimmy Controversy is getting power slammed onto a bunch of action figures on a trampoline. It's just like, it's just like, I don't know why. It's just like the, oh shit. You know, I'm sorry, something happened. You're but good. anyway, yeah, you're good. Y'all heard my, y'all heard that part. But yeah, I guess for me, it's just like what I miss mostly from GTS is just like, like um, it's just like the randomness. Like there's a bunch, like back then it was just like a bunch of randomness like, outside of the ring. You know, there would be like a bunch of crazy brawls in like in, like a store or out in the parking lot. But of course, I know this for a fact because like the YouTube algorithm and like the demonetization stuff like they gts really can't do that anymore because they would label that like oh they're wrestling in a store it's like an assault or something like that because i remember because i know that almost all the original gts like videos that there were have gotten demonetized and that sucks and and now like and and i remember the whole thing in 2016 where you know professional wrestling was labeled that on like non like unad friendly because it was all about the ads. YouTube took the advertising side of all this, and I think that was absolute bullshit what they did. Yeah. I don't care if it's going up on YouTube or not. That, that was absolute bullshit what they did. But yeah, but then in recent years, you know, that started to like not go away, and YouTube's algorithm is still fucked up. Yeah. And and like and that sucks coming from like a YouTube podcast like. Like, the fact that we are still having those problems to this day. So, yeah, for me, like, I just miss that, those crazy brawls and, like, like in random place in random places. And 
and, and again, and of course, like we can't really do that nowadays because of, you know, COVID and you know, all this sort so of stuff. So you find like more, more location, more random locations than just every episode being in the same spot. You want it to be more variety as far yeah. as where it's filmed and even what's happening. So like you, you might not want a, a wrestling episode every every day. You might want you know, Grim doing something, or maybe even one of the other, like, would you be interested in, like, you know how you just said, like, Grim would, would go and put, like, just an episode of him doing, you know, random stuff with his friends. Like, would you be interested in seeing, like, almost like sketch comedy where it's, like, Grim with his friends, and then all of a sudden it, it pans over to me, and I'm doing something, and then it pans over to, I don't know, Jay the Key Evans, and he's doing something, you know? Like, something like that, like, where it's, like, we're seeing a little bit of everybody. Would you, would that be interesting? Yeah, that would be. I would definitely enjoy that. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. All right. Mike, you go. Oh, wait, me? Um, well, I'm kind of the same way. It was like, I just like the randomness of it and like where it would be. It, that, that, that always entertained me. Mm-hmm. I think like more like off location places. It's not just well, the that's, part. that's like what I was telling you guys earlier about when me and Joey Angelo had the match and we went over to the neighbor's yard. I wanted yeah. to give you guys a change of location because I knew that would interest people. So that's you're exactly proving my point right here. So, yeah. uh, so now, Will, let, let me hear from you. Yeah. So similar to Julian, I I was an OG as well. I remember the first like action things. I remember when he was with Silly Super Pop. I remember all that, and you know, <clears throat> I even remember the first ever uh, ring episode he did. The first time he was ever in the wrestling ring, showing us as viewers. I remember all that, and. Unfortunately, right now, obviously, because of what I'm doing and due to the fact that there is a bit of a time difference as well where I am, I haven't been able to watch as much as I'd love to, but I still know what's going on. However, with that being said as well, I always enjoyed the wrestling side of things. I always enjoyed, you know, the matches because, again, from personal, I know how much you guys sacrifice your bodies for us. And I know how much, you know, it means you got to entertain us. And for that, we can all we, we are always feel grateful for that. From my personal view, I would say this is similar to their points, but I would say with with the with the characters, I'd say just for my personal preference, this doesn't have to be for everyone, but for me personally, I always enjoyed it more when the characters not only are the characters, you know, more about well see, I like I like to I like a story. I like a story along with a character. So so like, I, like by character, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but I do want to ask by character. Do you mean like character like me, like like Tony Cheney on the character, or do you mean character like Slenderman or like Tito the Clown or something like that? Like what? I like mean, what I mean more or less. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean pretty much everything. If it's not the actual thing, then it, I mean that. So eat you, uh, so the Slenderman, all of that. So I would like I'd like to see development more if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is, you know, you had the Slender Man and you had Tony Genie. However, for me personally, I've always enjoyed it when, you know, the character itself develops more, more than just that one gimmick, so to speak. Then more than just one Tony Genie. I've always enjoyed it when, let's say, you for example would develop, like how you just said there, you're going to change it in ring. Nothing's happening to Will. Will. Oh, am I still there? Yeah. You still hear me? Oh, you're here now. Yeah. yeah. Can you repeat what you yeah, just you said? The last part. Oh, guys, tell me about the time zone difference. <laughs> it's killing me. But, <laughs> but no. So in other words, it's like you said earlier about how you're gonna change it in ring style. I'm not saying that that would absolutely be necessary, but I love when like characters in terms of Tony Genie, for example, develop. And if it means changing your in-ring style, that could bring some interest to not only others who might enjoy it as well. Like, so, like something that I, I try to pride myself in personally is that I have like those moves that I pretty much hit every match, like like the scissor yeah. kick or the, yeah. the neck breaker or the delivery driver. But I try I love my best. Driver. I try my best to to not do a lot of the same moves twice. Like, those are my go-tos, obviously, but I, I try to change up a lot of my offense, and, like, I try to, to constantly do something new and different, 
And I mean, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Like, I mean, like one of the things that, that kind of stuck with me, it was, it was like a WWE angle when Evolution came back against The Shield. You remember yeah. that? Now, when that happened, uh, Evolution's thing was Adapt or Perish. Yeah, Adapt or Perish. Like, that, 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 like, that quote always stuck with me. And, like, really actually, like, even though it was supposed to just be, like, a wrestling thing, it really, like, actually stuck with me because it was, like, now I really know if I'm just going to do the same thing over and over again, then, you know, somebody might be like, oh, yeah, we've seen it, and it's cool, but let's see something new. But if yeah. I'm constantly out there doing something different, something new, a different move, a different attitude, a different uh, focus, a different anything, then, then it keeps people constantly invested in what you're doing. Makes exactly, sense. yeah. Exactly, I agree with that completely, and that's exactly what I like to see. Right on. And Pete. last but not least, um, one point where I really was invested in GTS was remember last year in 2019 they were doing the whole AWE versus GTS. How Kurt Bale took some of his stars, some of the stars, and they wanted to start their own promotion and this and that. And I really oh, like that. I had to get it back. Yep. I really liked that view that was going on. And, you know, that type of year, we had those, you know, what happened to Lance and what was going on with Jimmy. You know, like Julian said earlier, you know, the brawl is just at random places outside of, you know, diners and stuff. I also miss out, you know, because you can't do this now because, you know, YouTube age restricts and everything and the monetizing, but how vulgar Grimm used to be. And, you know, maybe see some blood here and there or a hardcore match or something extreme. But, you know, what's been going on? You know, YouTube, they're not going to allow us to do that or you know for gts for that to happen because you do that the video could get taken down it could get age restricted and you lose almost half your viewers yeah yeah it's, it's unfortunate but uh we're trying like i said to adapt or perish and and we're doing the best we can and but i i feel like I'm, I'm glad that that you did this turnover because like i one of the things that we're constantly doing like is is trying to think like like, what is it that's really going to, like, like what is it that's that's losing viewers? What is it that's gaining viewers? Like, what is it that they actually want? So it's good right. to collect different points of views. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to put it together and uh, hopefully be able to, you know, put that towards myself as a character. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, I do change and adapt myself. So I want to make sure that I'm the most entertaining I can be. So we appreciate that. Absolutely, man. And All right. uh, if you got anything else, hit us with it. All right. So this is. Let me think. I gotta have one more question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I I do have one more question. I do actually. So I want to know. Now, obviously, I do love teaming with Joey and I do love it. But what do you prefer you see out of me? Do you prefer you see me in a singles atmosphere or a tag team atmosphere? Because I've held all the singles championships except for the YouTube title, but I've also held the tag team belts, I think, eight times. So what do you prefer? I'll go first. Both at the same time. So you think I should have all the belts is what you're saying? Hey, you want to translate it like that? Yeah. I'm going to. So you could be tag team with Mr. Angel, and then you could be singles with Francesca managing you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I should pretty much do, actually. I mean, kind of do both, so. Yeah, so just keep it up. But, like, you know, maybe less tag team, more like just you kicking ass. Okay. All right. I'll take it. All right. Um, yeah, you, you, Steve, Steve's getting right back. I was about to say, we lost Steve. Yeah, Steve, he'll, he'll be back, probably in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't need to know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I guess for me. Oh, Steve, when, hello. And he's gone. Um, <laughs> My bad, I, I went to close the door. <laughs> yeah, when it, to be perfectly honest, jo T Tony, um, I'm more of a fan of you as a wrestler than I am of Joey Angelo because I remember when Joey Angelo first came into GTS and like that the old warehouse that like, he wasn't selling shit. Yeah, I remember those times and um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I really do like how he has grown as a competitor. But for me personally, I would rather see more of a you as that singles competitor. And like you said, like we're going to get a very different Joey Angelo. Like you can really showcase the new side of not Joey Angelo, Tony Chini. Shit. Uh, I mean, you said there's going to be a new side of Tony Chini. I feel like if as a single star, we can really get that that change and like that different side of Tony Chini than we can see in a tag team. Because I, again, I just recently got back into it and I've started watching you and Tony and, and Aunt Joey. Fuck. T- Tony, Joey, Tony, Joey, Tony, Joey. It, I'm talking to Tony now. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, I would rather see more singles action from, from Tony Chini than teaming with Joey Angelo. And then, this is nothing against Joey Angelo. Nothing against him at all. It's just that, again, we're seeing a new side of you. And I feel like you can really showcase that more as a singles competitor. Right on. It took me fucking your name up so many times to get it out. (laughs) That's okay. Which one's next? Which one's next, Chini? Who do you want? Who do you want to hear speak? Whoever, whoever, whoever wants. I just got back. What's the question? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had to go lock the front door. No, the the question was, do you prefer Tony Chini as a singles competitor? Or a tag team competitor with Joey Angelo. Mm. I mean, I would like to, you know, see you do your own thing and, you know, go after those single championships. Like you said earlier, you know, you're still trying to... The one title that alluded to you is, you know, the YouTube Heavyweight Championship. I feel like, you know, you, that should be something that you do on your own because you know what that leads up to. You win that title with the partner, he's going to turn on you, this and that. So maybe, you know... If you were to go do your own thing, I feel like, you know, that gives you more time to, you know, better in your character and build it up to something. Because you never want to leave your character, you know, at one place because then people get tired of it being stale. And, you know, if you're not doing much with this, I feel like, you know, a lot of people should, not every tag team, but some tag teams weren't just meant to be. Like, you can go and branch on your own thing. And maybe one day you guys can try again, you know, doing the tag team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will. Right. <clears throat> so, at the end of the day, is you you got to do what's best for your career. Now, for me personally, again, this is up to you completely, but personally, I feel like you need to go for the one title that has eluded you. The one title that has eluded you your entire career. And that would cement your legacy. That would cement your legacy. I'm not necessarily saying drop your tag team power now. I'm just saying you should definitely go for the one title that has eluded you. And the fact that we, you can win it, we know you can win it. You know you oh, can win it. Who says you, you can't win it by yourself or with your tag team partner? It doesn't matter. As long as you go for that title, that will cement your legacy in GTS history. Look at Grim. Yeah, all, all, all four of us here at Tuck Your Chin, I feel like everyone else... All ten of part- us. All, all ten of us on the goddamn podcast. Yeah, we, we're all behind we, you, man. You got this. We all got our back, man. We definitely, can, we definitely think you can definitely hold your own as a singles competitor and as a tag team competitor. And we, you, you need to get that. Back. Tony um, Chini. Yeah. Tony Chini. Tony um, Chini. But yeah, man, we're all we're all behind you. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Right. So, into outros. Just right. do the outros. Mike, hey, you Chini. always... Mike. Let's see what you got. Let's, oh, let's see what Cheney got. Yeah, all right. Whatever you want to, whoever you want to, wherever you want to, whenever you want to. Plug, plug away. Now, the only person I can see right now is Julian. Is everybody's videos on? Or did something screw yeah, up? Yeah, we are. No. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, I'm the important uh, one, so. All right, we're getting there. Right. Hello? We're getting there. Do you see us? Nope, I only see Julian still. What the hell? Well, I can see all of you. See you. I, can, I can see all of you, and Mike's dancing for some reason. I definitely can't. Steve, Steve is doing the one-two shuffle with his arms. 
Okay, let's, right. you, let's just get into outros. Because I, as long as I can see everyone on my screen, I think that's... All right, so then, all right, yeah, you guys are starting to come back. So you want me to do an outro now? Yeah, plug anything. All right, plug, so that's it. Plug this your is what you got to do. You got to go on Twitter, at TonyCheney96. On Instagram, at TonyCheney. You go Facebook.com slash TonyCheney, stub your toe. You can go on YouTube, look up the official Tony Cheney YouTube channel. I'm putting out content constantly, trying to actually show my wrestling collection, trying to show my video games, all that kind of stuff. So check out my actual personal channel for that content. Go on GTS Wrestling, of course, to see me wrestling constantly, pretty much every day. And find me on the Tucky Chin Podcast. Yeah. Boss for Tony Cheney, everyone. Julian. Oh, my turn. Okay. So, like like Cheney said, you can catch him on the Tuck Your Chin podcast whenever this will be uploaded. Yeah, follow the Tuck Your Chin podcast. Subscribe, like, share, everything. Go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on Twitter. Go listen to us on Spotify, Apple, Mus- Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Go follow Mike. Go follow Will. Go follow Steep. Go follow me at Heavy Metal Joker underscore H O H on Instagram. That's my only form of social media, and that will be my only form of social media. Fuck Twitter. And uh, no offense to any Twitter users, I hate. I just don't like it. Um, but yeah, Instagram TV is gonna be coming up soon. Gotta get my album. Rev- gonna start doing album reviews. More concert coverage. Um, my top 30 favorite albums of the decade and my and the highly anticipated top 10 least favorite albums of the decade. And I'm going to piss off Mike. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, follow us, subscribe to us, subscribe to the Moshcast, follow the Moshcast. Durstcast is coming soon. Yeah, Lip Biscuit. And yeah. as always, and as always, I got to do it. Hold on. Give me a second. <clears throat> ah. God, I just drank I just drank some kiss soda. And I, I just drank some cherry cola and I don't think that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs> That's oh, all yeah. I, I can't, can't do it today. Okay, it's my turn. I'll, I'll let Steve and I'll like I'll let Will take this home. Well, everybody, you know what it is. The Tuck Your Chin Podcast. The best podcast at all of Pro Wrestling. Shout out to all the other podcasts there that's doing what they're doing during this time. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. All that will be in the description. Follow Steep. Follow Julian. Follow Mr. Cheney. And follow Mr. Will. And don't forget to always tuck your chin. And I got to turn it over to our man. Our plug, Mr. Can Steep I, Stone. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, sure. Just so everyone needs to know this, tuck your chin will never crash and burn. Oh... We'll tell you. We'll tell you about that Cheney after 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 we're done. That's Steve, right. Go. Well, this is the fastest rising podcast in all of professional wrestling, and I don't care what anybody says. Now follow us on our socials at Tuck Your Chin Podcast on Instagram at Your Tuck on Twitter, and we're also on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Follow each and every one of us. At I'm Steve on it underscore on Instagram at I'm Real Steep on Twitter at Tony Cheney. Look him up. Watch his wrestling. At Will No Mates, at Heavy Heavy Metal Joker underscore H O H, you know the hounds of hell, and to our wonderful host for starting all of this at Mike That Shift and Mike Shift That's Man, and I swear to God, if I will find where you live, if you don't subscribe to this podcast, and me and my best friend here will have some business to handle with you, so you better subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> You're gonna get this shoved up your ass. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Okay. Will. Take us home. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end now. I would like to thank our fantastic guests for being on here. Right oh my Give God. them a round of applause. Thank you, for thank you for answering our stupid questions. And we, and a great time. Thank you for having me. I really did. Thank you so much. No problem. We're, we're so glad that you managed to come on. We're glad that you had a great time. On behalf of everybody here, firstly, follow our members, Steve. Julian, and my fellow co-founder, Ginger Mike. Hello. Hello, indeed. Once again, guys, if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. It helps us a bunch. And hit the notification bell to 
notify you of the new upload please leave a comment as well letting us know how you thought of the episode follow us on twitter follow us on instagram follow me on instagram at will no mates because i have no mates and also due to the fact that i'm just lonely but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the episode on behalf of everybody here have a great day and always remember to tuck your chin and Take if care. you don't like that Blah! thank you Wait, you froze. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. We have to do it all together. Wait, wait, if you don't like that, we got uh three words for you. Three? Four. Top your oh, words. And if you're not down with that, I got three words for you. Just your chin. That is it.